All hail the scales. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I'm playing Arwen, Mortal Queen. Arwen is all about plus one, plus one counters, and a little bit of lifelink. She actually gives counters to another creature by sacrificing her own immortality, by which I mean removing her indestructible counter. So you can actually do this multiple times if you've proliferated her indestructible counter. This is also a card, by the way, that you can play in a different fashion. I think that Arwen, because she is a small indestructible creature, lends herself pretty well to a Voltron build. But I care a lot more about making plus one plus one counters happen because plus one plus one is super fun. This is what we like to call a scales deck because of hardened scales. We put additional plus one plus one counters on cards. We have synergy for our plus one plus one counters and we have a lot of cards that care about it. So if you're familiar with the Lord of the Rings, you know that Arwen gives up her immortality for the one she loves and they get married. But it's a lot funnier when you like give up Arwen's immortality to protect like, I don't know, an elf or maybe a dog. Carillion, thank you so much for the sub. Got it for my oh, and thank gift. you Fiona for gifting that sub. There's a lot of great plus one plus one cards in arena. Things that give you additional counters, uh, things that pseudo proliferate, things that actually proliferate, increasing the number of counters that you have and some cards that give you Plus one, plus one counters when things enter the battlefield. I also have some cards in here that I think are just really great to help support this archetype. Uh, like Kodama, who cares about anything that's modified, which includes counters of any type. That's right, you don't even have to get a plus one, plus one counter on Arwen because she already has, well, an indestructible counter. Same with the Rishkar. Rishkar just cares about, do you have a counter on you? Uh, great ways to get more mana so you can play these slightly more expensive cards and some of the X cost cards. We also have multiple things that care about any card getting a counter on them. Wildwood Scourge and Botanical Brawler both grow when anything else gets counters, which means that you can grow them by growing your other creatures. As far as the scales cards go, we've got Ozolith. We also have this Ozolith, which lets us move our counters onto other things. It's a really fun deck that's got a lot of great aggressive cards to it. So we're going to take Arwen into the queue and see who she gives up her immortality to protect. Arlen, the Pax Hope. She makes wolves and then she owls right at yous. She's actually a transforming card, able to turn from daybound to nightbound into her werewolf form. I expect there to be some good gruel flashy beats too, because she can actually flash out cards. They started with some ramp, though. Arboreal Grazer. Ooh, Clothis. This also could just be, like, good gruel cards. I think that that would be completely fair to play. I'm gonna get some things that start making some counters. Luminarch Aspirant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on yourself. And here's Arlen. So they don't have any mana up. I suspect they're just going to make two wolves. They're good dogs. They're really good dogs. We have four mana now. Uh, I could double spell. I could get out Arwen and protect my creatures. I kind of like just double spelling this turn. Gallagreeters into Duskshell Crawler. I'm going to get a treasure token there so I can play my five drop hopefully next turn. Uh, I kind of want to put everything on the Luminarch Aspirant. One big lady, please. Arlen is now able to flash out creatures. And the reason why this is synergetic with so many werewolves is it allows you to wait until your next turn to cast any spells. That way you can become Nightbound. Oh, well, you can make it nighttime, but they don't want to do that. Instead, they want to play Urabrask the Hidden so they can haste out with... Uh, oh, they're not actually attacking with it. Oh, so they can attack me with Kothis because she is a god! I can proliferate things with the Staff of Completion. I just want to grab more lands. Arwen's like, are you going to play me? Let's wait, sweetie. You can marry Vorin Kalex later. Mm. 
I'm going to grab a basic and a non-basic. I don't really need to hold open my mana for anything. Nice. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a seventh land right here. It takes eight to transform Vorinclex. And right now, I just want to make sure I'm able to block some of these really big gruel creatures. Yeah, we could, we could marry a Praetor. Chivin Devastator. Oh, yeah, I think this is just some good gruel aggro. I can respect that. Vorinclex does have reach, but he's not flipped over yet. There he is. He's untapped. Uh, I'm going to go for the Staff of Completion. Arwen. Yes, she is tapped, but she does have an indestructible counter. Uh, I'm going to get a plus one, plus one counter now onto this Gallagreeters. And I will wait. If you try to destroy one of my things, I'll protect it with Arwen. But I do have a way to proliferate here or here. So Arwen won't actually be giving up her immortality. We'll just be paying some life for fun and profit. Do we get a hidden reach? Vorinclex having reach does catch a lot of people off guard because this is the third iteration of Vorinclex and the only one that has reach. All right, it did not catch them, so we're going to proliferate. And uh, I'm going to have Arwen give up her immortality, I think, next turn. Because that's going to gain me a lot of life. Oh, look, it's nighttime! Uh, it's nighttime, but I want to see what's in your hand, because you can cast creatures at instant speed. Oh, she has no devotion! I was like, why did Clothy stop being a creature? It's because the backside has a color, but it doesn't have color pips. Oh, that's funny. Obliterating bolts! Okay, cool. Just getting out some more uh, things to proliferate here. Go ahead and get a two life because I've actually paid a bit. We're, we're going to be getting a lot more life this turn, though. Uh, I'm not even going to wait. I'm going to put the thing on the Vorinclex. Then I'm going to proliferate. This also gets proliferated, so we're going to put some plus one plus one counters on you and you. Mm, you can have another one, too. We're going to swing in with all four of these. The face is the place. And they have indestructible creatures. They have a god. But I can have uh, another indestructible creature too. If I want it. I could have two more indestructible creatures. If I want it. Yeah, she. this is very much the wacky, wavy, inflatable arms. Vorinclex. That's why he has reach. Is because his arms are always going like that. Okay, Clothis and Urbrask. Uh, I want Arwen to get another plus one, plus one counter. And, uh, I mean, sure, it's a lot of life gain. Perfect. So Arwen has given up her immortality twice, but she's still immortal. She's my immortal. I'm at 35, now 33 life. Looking good. We do have a treasure here, so we can give up Im Arwen's immortality again. Terror of the Peaks! Nice! Turns uh, enter the battlefield from creatures into damage. But because all of our creatures with counters on them have trample, thank you, Dusk Shell Crawler, we have so much damage represented this next turn. Oh, we might even be able to make it so the dogs can't block. Uh, here, you can have another plus one, plus one counter. 
We're going to play Champion of Lamholt, and I'm going to use this Remnant of the Rising Star to get additional counters on it. So I'm going to pay one, two, three. So these wolves now can't block. Uh, I think I can just immediately go to attacks, swing with everything, get in it to win it. Boop, 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 boop. Go get him. What's the dog doing? Not blocking. None of them are. And that's going to be GG. Proxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, enters the battlefield. Makes you discard in if you discard a land. Or just a non, non-land. Because if your hand is empty, you lose three life. Hi, Croxa. Croxa also has escape. It sacrifices itself if it was cast from anywhere except for escape from the graveyard. Let's see. Turn two, I have either a scales effect or invasion of Gobakan. Turn three, we've got Kudama, Frenching Evolution, and Arwen. These all look quite good to me. So hello, Marlboro. They're going to hit me with a mulligan. I'm keeping this. I said hi. Hi! I'm saying hi back. Wait, let me wave. Um, hello! Mind spike. They get to take out one of these. They might want to hit my, like, only creature, but because we have Arwen here, I feel like it's going to be one of the two drops. Do you care more about me having big creatures, or do you care more about me hitting your hand? So they care more about me making my creatures very large, since I don't have another source of plus one, plus one counters. Like a reusable one. I just have Arwen, which you could do once. Are there any Titans other than Oro and Croxa? There were supposed to be, but there aren't. Um, so apparently the whole cycle of them got cut down to just the two of them. Heartless Act, Nasty End, Blood Tithe, and Bitter Reunion. I'm going to hit the Blood Tithe Harvester here. Um, both because I think it would be their best play on this next turn. Bitter Reunion will probably be their play, or just Croxa. Um, but because that actually gets around indestructible. <laughs> and I don't want Arwen to die to a stupid vampire. We also never got a story for Theros Beyond Death, which is where the, uh, the Titans were from. Do you remember the Titans? I remember. I remember Uro getting banned in Standard. I think he got banned in some other places, too. Ooh, the plunder from down under. Uh, I'm going to drop Farewell. I'll let you have a card from my deck. So if I want to flip this over, and I kind of do, I could activate Arwen. Instead, because she is modified, I'm just going to get a land out of my deck. I expect I will be doing more discarding as time goes on. Now, I believe that the uh, other Titans got cut just because they couldn't fit in that many, like, on-theme cards. Because it was only one set instead of a block. It would have been a nice block! Didn't even get a story, though. Thankfully, the only removal we see in their hand, Heartless Act, gets completely blanked. Not just because of we make things indestructible, but because we put counters on things. Ah, oh, the Blood Tithe Harvester comes with a blood! Yummy. Mm. My turn. Nice. Alright, we're gonna go empty-handed here. And I'm just going to do this now. Throwing you at face and you over here to flip over the invasion of Gobakan. 
And also getting a land. Also gaining some life. Odama. Get me that forest. Now we have the light shield array that's going to put two plus one plus one counters on each of these because of branching evolution doubling our plus one plus one counters. And I have enough mana, thanks to Kodama ramping us, to replay Arwen if she dies. Blood Tithe Harvester could kill the Grateful Apparition, so could Heartless Act. And I don't think it's worth sacrificing the light shield array for that. Our win. Our win with our win. Now, losing three life doesn't feel so bad when you're gaining, you know, 10 to 20 a turn. Do you want to throw down Karaksa? You want to remove some counters? So Heartless Act, by the way, can remove the, indest the indestructible counter if she still had it, but she doesn't. Boromir! Oh, that's a card that they got out of my deck. Nice. These two have trampled thanks to Kodama. Oh, they brought back the Blood Tithe Harvester. Nice. Setting up for a potential double block, it seems. Ooh, a Stone Coil Serpent. I'm still going to attack in with both. I just want to get my damage where I can. And Stone Coil Serpent actually seems really, really great here because of the branching evolution. It's going to be a really big snake. Let's get our lands. Yes, please. One, a two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. So this is a 14, 14. Oh, and also it has protection from multicolored. And also I can make it indestructible. And also hexproof. Can you defeat my snake? Oh, okay, well, they're, they're gonna get protection from everything. Okay, fine. That buys you a turn. I still want to attack, by the way, because it will trigger the light shield array. Bunk. Bunk. And I do have my Karn's Bastion available, so I can proliferate. One of my favorite full art lands. These are really nice. Hi, I'm Arwen, and I'm indestructible. They're looting. They're looting. They're looking. And good game. Blow a kiss. GG, Arwen is the R winner. Yarek, the Desecrated. Salt High Colors doubles enters the battlefield abilities and is a nasty death touching life linking elemental itself. And, well, that means it works really well with one of my favorite other elementals, Risen Reef, which I'm really hoping is in their deck. It's just one of my favorite cards. It ramps, draws cards, it's my friend. Go get him, hopeful initiate. Starting out strong with some plus one, plus one counters. And I still have a way to set up training next turn. Oh, nice. Topiary Stomper gets them a basic. If I use the Orin Reef Ooze and Luminar Gastrant to put the counter on itself, I'll have three power, which is all I need. To engage in some training. Oh, those are some serious scales. If 
find any old gods. Who do you take out? Looks like they're going for the hopeful initiate. Okay. Completely fair. I could play Arwen here. I kind of like going for Invasion of Gobacon, though. It shows me their hand. I can flip it over very safely this turn. Oh, ew. Um, Henge is like the immediate thing. But I know what I care about removing. Slowing down those ultimatums. So we know that they have a Reclamation Sage, and that's fine. We'll sacrifice it in response if that happens. I think the best thing that they could get here is if they drew a basic, they could go Great Henge into Reclamation Sage. So I think I counted that right. Next turn, I'll be able to do it. And this is also their seventh land, so they will be able to attack and block with the Topiary Stomper. Nissa! Hey, Nissa. Nissa lets me uh, tap my forest for some extra mana. So let's grab some forests. I'd rather go for, like, unblockability or either of those. I'm just going to make a beautiful army here. Uh, i trying to think who I want to protect the most here. I could make it so any of these would require a double block. I think that that's like the sneakiest thing I could do. Especially because I already know that they'll be able to destroy this next turn. Get them to set up the double block and we'll sacrifice the light shield array. I've already got them down to two. The only thing that kind of, like, screws us over on is if they have a board wipe. We know three of the cards in their hand. Or I should say, like, two in hand, one in exile. Oh, nice! Gonti! We do have one board wipe in our deck. We have a farewell. It's just a really good card. It's very versatile. Uh, but they wouldn't have enough mana to cast it. So I think right now we're good. Conclave Mentor! Oh, that's what they stole! Well, all we need to do is swing in. We've got a ton of damage, and that's going to be GG. Didn't even need to use Arwen this time. She's just sitting there being a hoity-toity elf. Any hoity-toity elves in the chat? Or just regular elves? Emoti, celebrant of bounty. I don't want to keep this hand because it doesn't have anything on turn one or two. This also doesn't have anything on turn one or two. A little glare of the Hydra. I mean, maybe our opponent will unexpectedly be a land destruction deck and then we'll heroic intervent. No, I'm going to mulligan again. Ah, uh, it's still nothing until turn three. Get out of here, Nissa. I tried. I tried to find my one and two drops and failed to do so. Sorry, we have three drops, three drops, and four drops. Into the north. They ramp! Because that's what Emoti cares about. Getting a lot of mana, and then cascading. That's why I wanted early stuff, is because their early game is going to be ramp, 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 ramp. And I want to stop that. Speaking of stopping things from being cast for free from outside of the game, Boromir. It's part of why this was a really nice hand. Um, without having stuff. So if they cast something for free, Boromir is going to chuckle. He'll go, oh, ho, 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 ho. And, um, stop it. Hi, can't be countered. I'm gonna bounce my Boromir before the cascading can even happen. It feels like they have a bounce spell, but there's not that much I could do about that. Into the royal! Alright, Boromir's back in my hand. That means that they can cascade this turn. Also means that I don't get to hit their face and I don't get to draw a card. Come on, Emoti. Nope. Nissa. 
Nissa who makes the horrors. Oh boy. I love the horrors. This has to attack, so we attack. I'm also going to get down a flyer, the Grateful Apparition. I know I have nothing to proliferate, but when this hits a player of our Planeswalker, it will proliferate. And we have a way to get counters next turn. Why are you looking at my Tusky? Why are you looking at my temple garden? My sweet Selesnian land. It's so pretty. Caius Lutner, this is a nice piece of art right here. As somebody who is currently in autumnal New England. Yeah, it's nice. Um, okay, fine. You take my Tosky. Rude. That will give you card draw. All right, so I can exile the Tosky. Um, I could hold out hope of something bigger and better in this world. But the first thing I want is more indestructible counters. So now Arwen is super double mega ultra indestructible. So indestructible. Yeah, nice big boys. Tyrannix Rex! Yeah, it's Reckon. That has trample, so blocking it won't prevent that much. I use Arwen here. And I'll just block Tosky. It'll still draw two cards and deal quite a bit of damage to me. And I get four poison counters. My turn. Okay. Okay. Got some extra scales going on in here. Yeah. Nice and big. And chunky. Do you let one or both of these hit? Ward four. Really big apparition. One of the big things here is how much life I'm going to be gaining. Oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. Excuse me. Keep growing. Bigger. Better. Faster. Stronger. More. Okay, excellent. They only have one thing with trample. And they are encouraged to use that to take out the Wandering Emperor. Because if they're not hitting my face, then the counters don't happen. This has to attack. You're gonna go in with all of them? Just a little bit. Like, I am fine with the Wandering Emperor dying. Since we have some, uh, let's say, indestructibility to spare here. We're going to use Arwen's ability again, this time to grow the Kami of Whispered Hopes. She still has an indestructible counter. She has one, and she also has three lifelink counters because, sure, girl, whatever. Draw some cards. Got eight poison. If they take an extra turn here, I'm kind of screwed. Ah, there we go. See? Extra turn. Okay, you could also have just attacked me, but sure. And they swing in. And they take us out. The power. Of the Tyrannix Rex. Actually, it's a power of extra turn spell. It's, it's pretty good. 
Sarabon of many colors. And those colors are um, blue and white and black. Those those are the many colors. So I have three mana here, but I don't have any two drops. I'm going to keep this because I'm going first. And I believe in my ability. Have fun! Uh, our opponent, by the way, is the Millie Saruman. This Saruman, when you cast your second spell, mills and then casts enchantments, instants, and sorceries for free from your opponent's graveyard. Kind of cool. Oh, a thought sneeze. Please don't. I was using those thoughts. Very often, though, this deck is just... Well, it's good control cards, because when you're in Esper Colors, the strongest way to play your deck in 1v1 Historic Brawl is unfortunately just kind of control. So sad, too bad, but it is true. Hello, Dark Slick Shores. What is your second land? Arwen. Not countered! Okay. Could be exiled. She can't be destroyed, though. She's indestructible so long as she has her fancy little counter on her. I also thought about throwing down Bossery there, because Bossery Cat has a very strong ultimate ability. This minus six. And if you can get in a stick early and just, like, plus and plus and plus and plus, that can be a good way to win the game. Christine Talisman! Oh, well, that means they only have colorless mana. I like that. I like that a lot. Because it means I'm safe to throw down Bossery! Now what do you want to cast, huh? You want to pack the negation me? Don't. You can't. You won't. They're not in colors that have a lot of haste, so I feel fairly safe attacking with Arwen this turn. And look, she's even double indestructible! Yeah, Arwen is uh, indestructible, so can just kind of block Saruman over and over and over and over. Now this is holding priority, because it's gaining them life. I get my damage in while I can. A Wara. And a Fabled Passage. They have five mana. Their commander does cost six. Are they trying to decide what color to get? White. So you can play a board wipe. Oh, wait. Indestructible. Blue. Oh, wait. You already have enough blue. Black. None of those. Okay. Keep growing that, Arwen. Want to bounce her? I'm gonna play fight rigging. Arwen Tron active. Ooh, Tin Timber Symbiosis. That's a fun card here because it's better if we're casting it for its, like, silly high cost here of seven. And I don't feel that bad about losing it because it is just a land. I'll swing in for five. Come on. Come on, Arwen. I've pressed spacebar like six times. You are not paying attention. Mind Splice Apparatus. This discounts their instants and sorceries. With delicious oil. We do have a bunch of proliferate in our deck, too, so there's a chance we might be able to get boss rig to ult this next turn. But I would have to get a proliferator first. There's like a 4 in 87 chance that we do. An unstable obelisk? Obelisk, the tormentor! Or just the unstable obelisk. They can use that to destroy a permanent, such as this or you. Pasha's like, please don't kill me. But I want to. They know about the cards in my hand, too. I mean, if I get another mana, I'm just exiling all artifacts in graveyards. I did not. Darn. I'll commit some more things to the board. Maybe that's a bad idea, since I'll probably have a board wipe coming up. I 
think I could hold back the dusk shell crawler. It's a secret. They don't know about it. We're going to get whatever we have off the turn timber symbiosis, too. Well, we'll try. Um. Okay. Uh, since they're going to remove counters from her, I'm actually going to activate her ability here. That way, because they would be removing her indestructible counter anyway. She remains indestructible until end of turn because of bossery. And now, like Champion Flamehold has an extra lifelink counter. It's just nice to have. Keep on swinging, my lady. Boss Rehat at ult for next turn. And that ultimate ability, by the way, if you're not familiar, makes a soldier during your upkeep and then puts plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control, which in a scales deck is awesome. They do have one, two, three, four, five. They're searching six mana here. There's a seventh here, but they would need another mana source in order to use the unstable obelisk to destroy Bossery. We also have like two creature threats here too. Very spooky. Good and spooky. The tail's end would also work. Time warp. All right, so they're taking an extra turn. They're, they are, they, based on the fact that they did nothing else, this is just them looking. They're, they're trying to find, do I have another mana? Do I have any way to deal with this? Do I have my own farewell? That wouldn't stop Bossery, but it would stop everything else. Ooh, they're digging. They also have this Mind Splice apparatus. So, like, their spells are super discounted. Well, their instants and sorceries are super discounted. What could it be? What could they have? Archmage's Char- Okay, so they're just drawing two cards. That, by the way, even with the discount, doesn't make a difference because they had to pay triple blue. Can you plus one boss if there's no target for the counter? Yes! It says up to one target creature. They definitely don't have enough for the obelisk. They could have another kill or exile spell, though. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Come on, Saruman. Stop doing the math. Let me hit you in the face with an elvish queen. She's so pretty. She's so pretty and she got married to this other this human warrior. Yeah, that could be like a strider type. Okay, so they march of wretched sorrows in order to kill Basri before he could trigger. And that is entirely fair. I'm gonna play Ozolith. I'm gonna make Arwen dummy double extra mega thick. Turn Timber Symbiosis. Um, I, I definitely want the Symbiosis side. Micaeus, Raptor, Pup, Ooze. Raptor. That gives me Two plus two counters because of the Ozolith, and then another two. We swing in. It's not lethal, but it's damn close. They're down to four, and I'm at 47. Yeah, Saruman is hiding in his tower. Saruman of many colors. He's hard to take out because he does have a really strong ward cost. But what else do they have? <gasps> they made Arwen walk the plank! That was their second spell, but there was nothing that cost less, so they couldn't mill. We just attack in. We win the game. Good game. Again, it's a Modi, celebrant of bounty. Got our butt kicked by one earlier, but we were able to stop them from cascading by using Boromir. This is much more of just a really aggressive hand. We have a uh, 
Things that care about counters, things that care about counters, and things that make more counters. Thanks, Grateful Apparition. You are great. Uh, I have to decide what order I want to play things, though. I think my ideal order here is going to be Grateful Apparition into Rishkar. And then throwing down these guys. That way, I've got a proliferate engine, and I have a threat in the air that's growing over time. They, by the way, had an incredibly strong ramp start here. Turn one, Halfling. Turn two, Iron Crag. Is it time for a turn three, Emoti? Yes, it is. And she cascades into... What was that? Two lands? No, what, what was it? What was it? I didn't get to see what it was. Come back here! I don't know what you played! Fine, okay. Grateful Apparition swings in. Ba-bam. And we proliferate! A 3-3 three, three in the air. That will become a 4-4, four, four, then a 5-5, five, five, then a 6-6, six, six, then a 7-7! Seven, seven. Or maybe even more if we get that Conclave Mentor out. I love Selesnya scales. Uh, I could go for the Henge this turn, but I roll greed. Conclave Mentor first. Botanical Brawler. They could have uh, like a Gear Hulk here. So we're not attacking in with Rishkar. We proliferate! Oh, look at that brawler grow! Plus two, plus two each time because the Conclave Mentor has a scales effect. The Great Henge, how much could it cost? Two mana? Get down Arwen. She'll get a plus one, plus one counter from the brawler. Ooh, the Sin of Sentinel. Orinclex. Nice. Uh, I will attack in with you, you, and you. Ah, Cyber Siphoner, but with no spells to bring back. Probably looking to recur things like Time Warp. Yeah, you don't have a Time Warp. So we've got 13... 15, 18... I could bring it up to 19 using Arwen. That's not lethal. So first I'm going to get more indestructible counters. More. Oh, wait. No, it would have been lethal. I forgot about the Conclave Mentor. That's on me, guys. I forgot. Please don't ever expect me to play my own decks well. Just because I made them, I'm piloting them. You should expect nothing from me. Except for my desire to play a Great Henge, because it's great. GG, Modi. Catty Lord is playing the first Sliver. And now we have to ask the question, is it actually a Sliver's deck or is it just five color good stuff? Ooh, third land. Only time will tell. Get down the Ozolith. Play all my sweet Selesnya somethings. They explore. Get it, Johnny. Yes, there are enough slivers in Arena for a sliver deck. I have a sliver deck. So I'm going to start with a very lonely boss cat who is just going to plus into the void. I'm doing this entirely to try to get him to ultimate before this happens. And that's a completely legit strategy. Arwen, Mortal Queen. Block for me. Nice. Uh, I'll choose white. We scry. Don't feel like I need another land right now. And if they have Arwen leave the battlefield in any fashion, uh, we will get to store her counters. Ugh, Golos. So here, here's the silver lining. Golos is an artifact, and we can destroy artifacts. I wish I could do that and that in the same turn. I'm going to prioritize this, uh, and we're actually going to be able to steal the ability. This is adorable. Uh, Agatha's Soul Cauldron, if I can manage to get to seven mana, I'll be able to activate for anything with a plus one, plus one counter on it, Golos's ability. And if you don't think that's awesome, you're wrong. It's not the silver lining, it's the sliver lining. Yes. Oh, also, uh, Bosser can ult next turn. 
I, no, I want I want Arwen. I want Arwen to use this ability. It would be amazing. Let it happen. Let it happen. Oh, boo! Boo. Whatever, I'm gonna have multiple plus one plus ones. Plus fun, plus funs. Swinging with these two. Post combat, we proliferate. Arwen is now double immortal. That art is really great. The first sliver cascades into Solve the Equation, which allows them to tutor for, oh, I don't know, Emergent Ultimatum. Oh, I don't know. Emergent Ultimatum. I don't like you, first sliver. And I want to make sure you know that. Spread the love here. Go get him. Who's getting blocked? Okay, so fun. Do we get four? More. I gave up more immortality twice to deal more damage. Down to four. What do you get off your virgin ultimatum? So here's this giant oh, well, first you want to cast it for free, of course. Alator, thank you for the raid. Oh, oh, look. They have two incidences of free spells. Those are the spells they were probably going to look for anyway. So my guess is, since they've already casualtyed of war, um, they want to get something that lets them get that back into hand and then some extra turns and maybe a loop. Hmm. 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 With all of the redundancies I have on my board, I have uh, lethal off this, this, you, any of these creatures. It's just going to come down to, like, how stupid of a card is this? It's extremely stupid. Uh, Wizards of the Coast, please let me curate this format Please. Pretty please. It's fine. I'll just take a bunch of extra turns and I'll sit here and... You know what? This is an amazing time for me to tell you guys about something. You may have noticed that during part of this video, we've had a little ba-bam Rudu Ranger thing. I'm going to do a hashtag sponsored shill. They don't sponsor my videos, but they do sponsor my stream. Voodoo Ranger, makers of fine IPAs, has actually released a Magic the Gathering IPA. This is the Vastwood Seer IPA. You can buy it online and it's in some stores. Make sure you call ahead though, because it's a pretty limited distribution. Yeah, Vastwood Seer IPA. It's Nissa themed. And it's a hoppy, tasty, yummy one. Uh, most of Voodoo Rangers IPAs tend to lean on the sweet side. And I believe this one is much more on the, the hopsy side. All right, farewell, Splenda and Seagate Restoration. I don't know what you have in hand. But this is fine. We'll make it work. I'll make it work. So something fun about Overwhelming Splendor is it's going to turn my creature land into a base 1-1. One, one. And then it gets three plus one plus one counters on it. Which means it is a 4-4. Four, four. That not go. Shouldn't it be a <gasps> layers? It's freaking all right. So that should have worked, but it doesn't because the rules of magic are complicated. So I think it's actually time stamps. So pretty much it is a one one, and then I'm overwriting that and turning it into a zero zero. Numbers.
I couldn't have canker bloomed into a proliferate still wind. You should probably look at the abilities that canker bloom has. Ready? It's none. There's no abilities because of this. Um, they didn't play first sliver. They must have something else. Or maybe they're just playing a bunch of other stuff to get enough mana. Should I have shuffled the farewell there? Um, I think that letting them draw the cards wouldn't have been enough. Okay, so what they did there is they actually screwed up. They overextended, and they didn't have enough mana to cast their sliver, so they don't have a blocker, so we win anyway. Yeah, gaming! Woo! Got there. Our opponent is playing the Radiculous Radic Tal Zealot. Radic's great. That's really all you need to say is that Radic's a really strong card. And if you don't know what Radic does, um, he makes knights. And he rewards you for attacking with knights. You attack with a knight as long as he's on the battlefield. And you get another knight or knight-related card. Many of which are actually removal, which means that you end up with a ton of stuff going on. Ooh, yeah. Let's get the Luminar gas rent out here. Don't kill her. Ah, they killed Lumi. Darn. The Squeegian Duelist. It's time to da -da 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 duel. This thing draws me a card. If it gets a plus one plus one counter, only triggers once per turn, but that's all you need. Uh, Changeling Outcast, by the way, is a knight, and it's also unblockable, which means it's a perfect start for something like Radic. Oh, that's a knight too. That's a brand new knight. Dang. It would be cool if I got mana. It's fine, though. I'll swing in with the Hopeful Initiate and the Dusk Legion Duelist. Ooh, Black Lance Paragon. They're going to kill my Duelist. I give him some Death Touch and Lifelink. Yeah, okay. I'll just play the little guy. Behold my little guy. <laughs> They're going to attack in here. I can't block that. I won't block that because lands. This deck has plenty of lands in it, by the way. I promise. I promise there's lands in here. Let's uh, throw down. A Scourge to start. And Micaeus to follow up. Getting my extra plus one, plus one counters, and then sitting here and taking a beating from Radic. Are Ixlan announcements tomorrow? They are. Radic triggers again. I take the damage. I'm gonna have to try to gain some life back with Arwen. Circle of Loyalty! These all get plus one, plus one, and they can make a knight. I'm just guessing that was made. Yep, it says A23 on it. Ah, oh, price of fame. Micaeus was too famous to live. I don't like that you kept all those cards on top of your deck. Arwen! And prolifer. Wait a minute. I didn't. I didn't, ma I didn't manually tap. I can't proliferate here. I can't proliferate here! Fine. Halfling. Get the counter. Go get him. Valiant Knight can give all the knights double strike. I just need to gain a little bit of life. Arwen's already given up her immortality. Alright, so you get a plus one, plus one counter, which causes you to get another plus one, plus one counter. We have them gain four in the middle here. Alright. Gain four. 
proliferate. Counters are gonna happen. More counters are gonna happen. More counters are gonna happen. Sleep. Cool. Who needs tapping their mana correctly when you can just win? Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. As always, if you'd like to watch me record these live, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, where I stream almost every single day. If you liked R1, let me know in the comments. And if there's another commander you'd like to see me brew or update, let me know. As we get closer to Halloween, I'll probably be uploading some more spooky decks, which typically just mean that they have black mana in them because, listen, zombies, vampires, all of the coolest monsters are in black. And that means that we're going to be playing a lot of cool spooky decks in the next week. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a brutal day.